Hey y'all, hey, it's me, sexologist Shamira, popping in with another really quick video. So I have a question that was sent to me um, from someone who is really concerned about the way they use their mouth, right? And many of you might also be concerned about this as well. And yes, this issue in relationships have caused people to separate, divorce, and break up, not like each other, and it's caused all types of uh, rifts in the relationships. Um, what am I talking about, right? What form of using your mouth am I talking about? Whenever I talk about intimacy, I mention that intimacy is being seen, being heard, valued, and understood, and in turn, it's also seeing, hearing, valuing, and understanding your partner. In uh, my book, Use Your Mouth, Pocket Size Conversations to Simply Increase Seven Types of Intimacy in and out of the bedroom, I talk about one form of intimacy that many people really have issues with for one reason or another, and that is intellectual intimacy. Have you ever just met someone and you thought like, wow, like I really enjoy talking to this person. I feel like they get me. You know, it's mental connection that's shared in the relationship. That is intellectual intimacy. Being able to sustain a conversation with your partner about various topics or interests. It's also being able to reciprocate that, right? It's also being able to talk to your partner about things that interest them. What happens when this is one-sided? Shamira, what happens if I'm not smart enough for my partner? If I can't keep up with my partner's interests or the conversations, then what do I do, right? And so some people, because this is a huge issue for many people, they will forget about the relationship. They'll end the relationship because it's super important to them. It's important to you to know what forms of intimacy work for you and where compatibility and chemistry lie in the relationship. So if you're with a partner and you're finding it very hard to connect with them on a mental level, and if that is a core value of yours, if that's something that is super important to you, you wanna see what type of boundaries you can set in the relationship. Is this something that can be resolved or is it something that is totally against your core values and it's totally a deal breaker, right? Um, there are ways to deal with this. I always ask you to use your mouth. Ask your partner one question to gauge their interests, but also to get them involved in some of the things that you're interested in. Because what we don't want is we don't want one partner feeling inadequate about the way they're showing up in the relationship as it relates to their intellect. And we don't want another partner feeling left out or feeling guilty for wanting more intellectual stimulation. That is a huge thing because many of you call yourselves sapiosexual. And so you really are turned on by intellectual conversation and intellectualism and all of the things, right? I love a good conversation myself. So if you want to explore intellectual intimacy more in your relationship, get the book. But also you can start by asking your, your partner, what are some topics that interest you? What are the things that you could just talk about on and on and on? And get your partner to teach you something related to one of those topics and you keep returning the favor. But if it gets to be too daunting for you, I recommend, of course, seeing a couple's, therapy, a couple's therapist to see if you can sort this out. 